All right, guys, last video for the day. This is gonna be on Christian unity, and it's directly addressing a lot of the folks out there that say that we absolutely have to go to church, otherwise we're breaking the law or going against God's rules or doing something that's that's outrageous. And, and these would absolutely apply if we could actually go to a church where they were teaching the word. The problem is, as we will get into this, uh, the requirement of strict adherence to the Bible is also in line with these meetups. So if they're not doing one, then the other doesn't mean anything. We can get together and sing and cry all we want, but if we're not following what the word says, learning it, growing, helping others to do it, we are out of line. So check this out. Romans 15, five through six. Now may the God who gives perseverance and encouragement grant to you, grant you to be of the same mind with one another according to Christ Jesus, so that with one accord, you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here is 1 Corinthians 1.10. Now I exhort you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all agree and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be made complete in the same mind and in the same judgment. Here's Ephesians 4.3. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. For every passage in Scripture which proclaims the need for unity of believers, uh, Romans 12.16, 2 Corinthians 13.11, uh, Philippians 2.2, also 4.2, uh, Colossians 3.14, 1 Peter 3 8. There is another which stresses the necessary uh, divisiveness of adherence to the truth. 1 Corinthians 5 11, 2 Thessalonians 3 6, um, and also 2 Thessalonians 3 14 through 15. Here is Matthew 10 34. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. And, and that, that's implying division. 2 Th Thessalonians 3 14. Take special note of anyone who does not obey our instruction in this letter. Do not associate with them in order that they may feel ashamed. 2 John 1, 9 through 11. Anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teachings of Christ does not have God. Whoever continues in the teachings has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not take them into your house or welcome them. Anyone who welcomes them shares in their wicked work. This is not at all contradictory. Close attention to all passages above will show that it is adherence to the truth, the actual truth of Scripture, as opposed to denominational perversions of it, which is the basis of all true Christian unity. Truth unites, falsehood divides, or it should. Romans fourteen nineteen. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for, make for peace, in other words, the truth, and the things by which one may edify one another, in other words, the truth. Here is Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. Christ himself appointed some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers in order to prepare all of his holy people for their own ministry work, that the entire body of Christ might thus be built up until we all reach that unifying goal of belief in and full knowledge of the Son of God, that each of us might be a perfect person, that is, that we might attain to that standard of maturity of the fullness of Christ that we may no longer be immature, swept off course, and carried headlong by every breeze of so-called teaching that emanates from the trickery of men in their readiness to do anything to cunningly work their deceit, but rather that we may, by embracing the truth in love, grow up in all respects with Christ, who is the head of the church as our model. In this way, the entire body of the church, fit and joined together by him through his, the sinews he powerful, powerfully supplies to each and every part, work out its own growth for the building up of itself in love. Ecumenicalism, Unitarianism, Denominationalism, all disparage truth as divisive and exalt instead a false unity based upon the rotten foundations of political action. All genuine believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, those who have committed themselves to be close to him through his truth, see Jeremiah 30, 21, also James 4, 8, will eschew to the depths of their souls this Faustian bargain. So those of you who are tempted to walk away, that's the spirit inside you. That is not that is not just some random uprising of, of revolt. You guys are actually likely on the verge of something great. The implications and the risks of compromising the truth for the sake of such false unity will become all the more clear and pronounced during this soon to come tribulation when Antichrist will institute his syncretic one-world religion that accepts every other religion into its bosom, except for true biblical Christianity. Revelation 14, 9 through 10. 
And yet a third angel followed him, saying in a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark upon his forehead or upon his hand, he himself will also drink from the wine of, of God's wrath, which is mixed undiluted in the cup of his anger. And that person will be tormented in fire and sulfur before the angels, saints, and before the Lamb. You guys have to know that applies to former believers as well. No one saved, always saved. Going to keep saying it. It is the belief in and full knowledge of the Son of God alone, saving faith in Jesus Christ, his true person, human and divine, and his work for us on the cross in dying for our sins that is truly unifying. See Ephesians 4.13. Any compromise with this fundamental tenet of our faith flirts with apostasy. In other words, divorce from him or leaving him. 1 Timothy 4.1. That includes things like ritualistic behavior like water baptism. It tempts people to think that maybe they're not doing what they need to do to be saved. All of that nonsense. 1 Timothy 4.1. The Spirit explicitly says that in the end times, in other words, during the tribulation, certain men will rebel, literally apostatize, leave the Lord is what it says, from the faith, giving their allegiance instead to deceitful spirits and demonic doctrines. 2 Timothy 3.1-5. So be aware of this that in the last days there will be difficult times. For in those times there will be men, in other words, false teachers from chapter 2 of, of, of 2 Timothy, concerned only for themselves, devoted to money, egotistic, arrogant, blasphemous, not concerned for their parents, ungrateful, irreverent, implacable, implacable slanderers, uninhibited, savage, despising the good, betrayers, impetuous, megalomaniacal, devotees of pleasure rather than lovers of God, possessing an outward appearance of godliness, but in reality having rejected its true power from such men turn away. Guys, I do not like saying this. It does not make me happy. I left the church 12 years ago. When I say church, I mean the church buildings at large. Unfortunately, they are so watered down with lukewarm nonsense that they are literally setting up all of the people that follow them to fall for the nonsense Antichrist will soon bring upon this world. It's amazing to me how many pastors who teach this garbage can still look around and see, wow, the signs of the times are such, we better get ready. But then they say, for the rapture. <sighs> Unfortunately, that's not disqualifying a faith, and neither is one saved, always saved, but they're so damaging to the actual true nature of what the Bible teaches us, the nature of what's really going on around us, the nature of, of what faith actually is, and the fact that while we're still in this flesh, we can leave him. I consider that the same thing. I consider that a doctrine of demons. It is. It's straight from hell, guys. Let's be fair. If anybody thinks that they need to stay around because it, de it demands that we stay in contact with other Christians, show them this video. Show them these scriptures. This absolutely needs to go out there, and you guys need to have the proper heart for this. Sometimes, being that lone voice in the wilderness is the right thing to do. Satan loves the whole principle of, of, of power and numbers. God could care less. He cares about his truth. He cares about his son. He cares about you being saved on that truth not in some group holding hands, crying because you can't really figure out what's going on because you've never really been told because the pastor doesn't do his job. I love you guys. I hope this is hitting home where it needs to. I would really, like I said, love to do a Sunday service so that we can actually get together, do the right thing, talk about what the word says, grow, move on to greater things so that y'all can do your ministry as well because what's coming is not slowing down. It's getting, it's, it's speeding up. Bless you. Thank you for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Share especially. This is a big one. There's lots of folks out there that are being tempted to leave, but they're finding that that they're, they're at odds with this. The scriptures literally tell us we are to divorce ourselves from those that do not teach the truth. And we are surrounded by it. I've never been to a church that fully teaches the truth. They teach a little bit, and then they'll have a woman pastor, or they'll say, come get baptized, or they'll do some nonsense that is legalistic and just not right. Talk to you guys soon. Have a great rest of your day.